Hello, and welcome to your weekly dose of Amazon Ads news and updates. Are you ready to be in the know? My name is Young, and I am a partner marketing manager for our Amazon Ads partner business. Today, we're joined by Bradley Sutton, Chief Evangelist and Director of Training at Helium 10. Here to talk to us about top tips for product launches and taking prime day keyword learnings for Q4 launch preparation. Welcome, Bradley. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Now, before we get started, quick question for the viewers. Have you started thinking about new product launches ahead of Q4? Or are you just focused on the summer holidays? Let us know in the comments below. All right. So Bradley, you've helped a lot of advertisers get started on Amazon. Can you share your top tips on how you can get the most bang for your buck when you launch new products? Yeah, so that's definitely my specialty. Um, I've launched hundreds of products, over 500 products in, in my time, either for myself, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still actively launching products, or for uh, my clients when I used to be a, a consultant for Amazon sellers. And the launch part of the process has always been what I'm most passionate about. I mean, I'm passionate about advertising, I'm passionate about keyword research, but launch, that's like my bread and butter. Now, I made up some terms before, and, and the, the Amazon industry made up terms, uh, for how we we approach launches and something that uh, was uh, that people come up with was something called the honeymoon period, right? Now this is obviously not an Amazon term. There's nothing in Amazon uh, documentation that says honeymoon period. There actually is something that it talks about, but but it, it uses different terminology. But it, it's basically what Amazon sellers are calling the first few weeks, maybe a couple months, even of a product launch, and and how different activities like purchases and add to carts and reviews and different things have probably a, a more uh, of an impact on newer listings compared to the same things that are happening to a mature listing. That's just for the simple reason that there's not that many data points for a new product. You know, Amazon has is amazing at all the data points and you have a product that's a year old. Well, it knows, you know, where the best keywords, you know, like where, where this product is going to be. But for a new product, it doesn't have as much uh, data until it builds it up. And so it's critical when you launch a, a product, uh, you're really taking advantage uh, of this honeymoon uh, period. And it's also, especially for Amazon advertising as well. Um, if you optimize your listing well, I start my uh, Amazon advertising ads, and there's some debate on this. Some people say, oh, you know, you shouldn't start Amazon advertising until you have a few reviews. I personally do not uh, subscribe to that mentality. I like starting advertising from day one because because of this, it, I usually can get more reach on my ads during this period. And then I came up with a further term based on this mm -hmm. period. We call it the, the Maldives honeymoon mm -hmm. launch strategy. You know, like uh, <laughs> I didn't take a honeymoon, but I, I Googled where's the most, the richest honeymoon that you could have the best honeymoon. And I came up with, with Maldives. All right. So, so uh, I was like, all right, I want to have like this honeymoon period on Amazon. That's also like, all right, the number one kind of, kind of a uh, honeymoon where all the celebrities go. Right. And so, I talk about this on, on the podcast where you get even more bang for your buck when you're using those uh, kind of strategies. Now, it involves uh, a lot of things, but um, some, you know, to, to kind of like simplify it, some main things is like, all right, hey, my top keywords I've got to have in phrase form in my title. Not not all of them. Obviously, we should never do keyword stuffing on, on Amazon, but you should also have the other top keywords like in optimal places in your listing. And then you double down. Uh, to get like the top of search on your exact match advertising campaigns. And all of this has got the goal of trying to increase your organic and search position uh, or rank to the top of page one. That's the key, in my opinion. When you're launching products, you are trying to get uh, your traction with your advertising uh, strategy so that your organic placement can be at the top. And then now you have two, two spots at the top of the page, organic and sponsored. Now, um, things that that can help is not just you know targeting the right keywords. That, that's common knowledge. I think everybody knows that. But it, it's it's finding opportunities to target uh, what I call like nested keywords mm -hmm. or keywords with similar roots. So an example I use, it's an actual product I, I launch and, and sell a lot of on Amazon, is I, I've got an egg tray. Now let's say in my keyword research, um, I, I've targeted, you know, I see that relevant keywords could be egg tray, uh, maybe wooden egg tray. Uh, egg tray for kitchen. Now, if I put in my title, wooden egg tray for kitchen, all three of those keywords I just mentioned, they're, they're all in there. Well, like Amazon doesn't require punctuation to recognize phrases or, 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 or things like that. Like it's got wooden egg tray 
It's got wooden egg tray for kitchen. It's got egg tray for kitchen. It's got egg tray all, all in one. And so when when I uh, start, I'll usually do a, a, a exact match campaign in PPC and, and, and advertising where I'm like, hey, uh, target egg tray, target egg tray for kitchen, target wooden egg tray. And then what I see is that when I get a sale or a conversion on one of those, it has a little bit of a ripple effect on the others. It's like they're they're all working together because Amazon knows that those keywords are related. Mm-hmm. And then so when I get a, a an order on wooden egg tray for kitchen, I, I'm going to see some bumps uh, in, in my my placement for egg tray and and an egg tray for kitchen. And so that that's that's kind of like what I I try and do is get that bang for the buck in my initial launch where I I see my my keyword rank skyrocket because of that. Yeah. A lot of interesting terminology, honeymoon phase, Maldives, and the egg tray and everything. Cool. Uh, um, so I know that product launches are a big deal for our agency partners. So these tips will really, really be helpful. Um, can you talk me through how you ad- ad- advise advertisers to conduct campaign setup during launch? Yeah. So you know, one thing that's important for everybody watching this to know is is that there's not like one right way, and then all the other ways are wrong. You know, there's there's so many different ways to have success. Um, but there's no one size fits all. My personal strategy, what I use over and over, is in addition to making that launch campaign, that exact manual campaign where it has some of those nested keywords and, and such, I'm also um, uh, going to start four to six different campaigns. And this is all part of a structure. And these are what I call like my evergreen campaigns. That mm-hmm. launch campaign, I might only have for a short period of time because usually I'm doing like fixed bids on those and very high bid so I can show up at top of search. I'm probably losing money on that, which I, I, my opinion is you should you have to lose money to make money, all right? So you need to make that investment in your product in the beginning to get those organic placements, but then, you know, that's not sustainable. You know, like, like if my product is $25 and I'm trying to pay $5, uh, you know, that's, and my, my profit margins are low, obviously that's not sustainable, but I have to do that to, to, to get to the top. Now, at the same time as I make that campaign, I have my evergreen campaigns going where I'm going to kind of transition to. And usually it consists of an exact match campaign, a phrase or broad match campaign. I, I call that like my research campaign, mm-hmm. an auto campaign, an ASIN product targeting campaign, and then a sponsor display ASIN campaign. Now, if I've got a video right off the bat and I'm brand registered for my brand, which I suggest that everybody hopefully is out there. I also go ahead and do a video ASIN targeting campaign and a video keyword campaign. That's probably one of the newer uh, ones that Amazon advertising has in the last year, where you can you can you can have you can differentiate between keyword video targeting campaigns and ASIN video targeting campaigns. If I have multiple products in my portfolio or in my brand, then I'll also do a regular sponsored brand campaign, the ones that come up a, a, as a headline. And the reason I do all of these at once is I have these campaigns talk uh, to each other. All right. Now, obviously, there's many uh, partner software companies that Amazon has that integrate uh, through the API with Amazon. You know, Helium 10, we, we've got Atomic. That's what I'm using. But you don't have to use a, a, a tool to do this strategy by, by no means. So what I do is I set up rules. So if you guys have access to a tool out there that does that, set up rules where it's like you're discovering keywords in maybe the auto and broad campaigns, and then you set up a rule that says maybe something like, all right, maybe I'll get two, if I get two conversions on this keyword at whatever is your target A cost, go ahead and move that keyword to like the exact campaign or the ASIN targeting campaigns if it was an ASIN and it discovered a new product. And, and basically I have all of the campaigns kind of talking to each other. So I harvest the keywords in those broad campaigns, those auto, and then I kind of funnel it to my, exact campaigns and maybe some of my research campaigns as well so that i really make sure i have really good coverage um out there for all the potential relevant keywords got it yeah no i mean rule-based strategies and automation are definitely helping a lot of the partners with their campaign optimization so that's that's a really good call out um now as you know we've got prime day it's a big deal you know that it's such a busy time for agencies and advertisers, right? But what should they be thinking about now as we head into the summer holiday period, which is basically Prime Day and like all these kind of stuff coming in? Uh, what should advertisers be doing now to set up themselves for, us for success for Q4 and beyond? Well, I would say a lot of advertisers, what they do, uh, which they absolutely should do, um, is increase maybe their bids, their budgets uh, during Prime Day. And so usually if you've done that, 
you'll notice once you start looking at your search term reports that you might have gotten some exposure on some keywords that are new to brand, right? Like may, that maybe weren't, uh, you, you never got you sales or clicks before. And now all of a sudden, because there's so much traffic on Prime Day uh, and your products being shown to more places because you increase your bids or budgets, you, you discover new keywords that you didn't know were, were relevant. And so everybody should be after Prime Day, look at your search term reports or whatever software you're using, you know, look at what was converting for you and see what are the net new ones to you. And then now these are keywords that maybe if you just don't do anything, you're not even going to get sales going on because maybe you maybe weren't organically ranked for it. And then, and then, you know, your, your sponsor, if you put your budgets back to normal, maybe Amazon's not going to show you. So you've got to double down on those that really were new to you. And now, Hey, go ahead and throw some of those into your exact campaigns because now what you want to do is you want to take those, those keywords and, and make those, not just give sales for you on Prime Day. You want you want them to be uh, uh, going into the holiday season in Q4. You want those keywords to be performing for you. So so definitely double down on those uh, uh, new keywords and put them in your evergreen campaigns. Um, another thing is look at your uh, the history of keyword performance. If you've been selling for more than a year out there, if you've got accounts you've been selling for two, three, four years, um, you're going to want to go into your Amazon brand analytics, uh, namely search query performance. I love looking at to see how did you do Q3 and Q4 of last year? Uh, what, you know, because what happens during those days is, is gift related keywords, for example, that don't show up at any other time of the year might start showing up there. Um, some of your regular keywords, maybe your conversion goes up during uh, Q3 and Q4. Maybe some keywords, your conversion rate goes down because for whatever reason. So these are things that you should be looking at. Amazon makes that data available for you if you're a brand registered. You should be looking at the, the peaks and valleys of your sales and look at the peaks and valleys on impressions on certain keywords and, and also look how the search volume has improved over time. Um, so, you know, it takes a long time to do this. It's a little bit tedious process in search query performance because you got to look week by week or maybe a uh, month over month or even quarter or, or over a quarter. So definitely uh, do that. And then uh, I know a lot of uh, sellers out there are using already Helium 10. So just go into tools like Cerebro or whatever tool that you might be using. There's tons of tools out there that are uh, Amazon selling partners. And the, a lot of them have uh, historical uh, ways to look at the data where you can just say, hey, show me where my product or this product was ranking in, in October of mm -hmm. 2022 and 2023. And then kind of like, base your strategy on what you see using those historical functions uh, like in Helium 10, where it's like, all right, now I know, hey, this keyword is new in October that the rest of the year, nothing was going on. Hey, let me double down on that keyword, not in October, but now September when it's cheaper, right. there's less traffic, double down then. And then now come October, <laughs> me, I sell like coffin shelves. That's why I say October, because I mean, we do a lot of Halloween <laughs> stuff and, and a lot, I have a lot of spooky, I'm not, I'm not a spooky person, but I just go where, where the Amazon customers uh, want. And, and if there's funny people out there who like coffin shaped things, go ahead. But I double down on those keywords in September when people aren't searching for, for Halloween kind of like stuff per se. Uh, and then now I'm already at top of search, right? Uh, come October, once that busy season uh, comes along. Got it. Yeah, no, I mean, looking at historical data, not only for Amazon ads, but also for everything kind of makes you help predict the future. That's basically what it is, right? Um, and definitely by the conversation I'm having with you, I can definitely see the excitement that you have with keywords. Um, so do you have any keywords research recommendation you can share with your audience? Yeah, so I mean, this you know, I've been in the game for, I don't know, like seven years now. And, and if you would have told me seven years ago that Amazon would have made things like search query performance and brand analytics available for sellers, I would have been like, nah, I'll bet you a million dollars that would never happen. <laughs> so it's really incredible the kind of data that Amazon has released uh, uh, in their analytical tools that really, really help sellers uh, get insights. Um, starting with brand analytics, you know, I, I could probably, you know, you hit on it. Like, like this is my passion. So, uh, I can see it's definitely obvious, right? That you know, I could, we could probably talk for an hour about <laughs> about a key, keyword research. But but some 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 of my top tips, um, you know, l l let's start with that brand analytics first of all. That that was the first thing that Amazon uh, came up with. You know, I'll, I'll go ahead and enter in my ASIN uh, of my products or some of my top competitors, and I'm gonna look back at different time periods to see where was my product or my competitors one of the top three clicks. So that's in the brand analytics top search term report where, hey, like if, if they're one of the top three click for the whole keyword, that's definitely 
uh, an important keyword for me, especially looking back at hi historical data. Now, um, you know, you can do that definitely. Uh, you go to brand, uh, your, your, your brand analytics, you hit top search terms. A lot of tools out there, even Helium 10 has it inside of it. Uh, thank you, Amazon, for making it available in the API so we, we, we can you know, integrate that. Definitely good. Um, another one that comes directly from Amazon, so that's a direct Amazon thing, brand analytics, is product opportunity explorer. Now, that's not available in Helium 10 or any other tool for that matter because there's no API for that yet. Hint, hint, wink, wink, Amazon, please hurry up uh, uh -huh. on that. But product opportunity explorer is amazing for getting data. You could like see where what niches your product or your competitor's product are in and then you're going to get all of the keywords from that niche. Now, th the difference about this with brand analytics is you don't even need brand registry. I still recommend everybody should get brand registry, but maybe there's some some newer advertisers here listening to the show and they they don't have brand registry for whatever reason yet. Well, don't worry. You can still get into Amazon Product Opportunity uh, Explorer. It's really great to look at some 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 cool details. And the last one is what I mentioned earlier today is search query performance. Now, um, you're going to see uh, if you've been selling yourself, uh, you're going to have a history of like the top 100, 200, 300 or more keywords that brought your product uh, traffic on Amazon. And then you're going to see how your product compares through the whole shopping funnel compared to other products. Uh, based on the number of searches, and then you can see the number of impressions your product and overall the overall had uh, to the number of cart ads to the number of purchases. All right, so really, really good to use that as as uh, keyword research. And then of course, you know, in Helium 10, you know, I've been using and I've developed, uh, you know, uh, this tool called Cerebro where I can see, hey, well, where is somebody advertising for? Where is somebody showing up in in search in search results for? It's uh, an and uh, the most important data point is what is Amazon thing is relevant. So if you have, you've got Cerebro, definitely look at this column. It's called Amazon recommended rank. If you don't have Helium 10, here's how you do that. It's a little, little known secret here. Go into your uh, advertising console. And then what you can do is, is you uh, start a campaign in the advertising console and then look at what are the recommended keywords that Amazon is saying, hey, you should uh, have um, you, you should advertise for these keywords. Now, what you don't see there is you don't see the score, but in the back end, th there's a score actually that Amazon is scoring each of these keywords for how relevant it thinks it is to your listing. And then, so if you see a whole bunch of irrelevant keywords showing up in the suggested, it could be an indication that maybe Am the Amazon algorithm is a little bit confused about what your product is because maybe you mm -hmm. didn't optimize your listing in the correct way. You don't have the right keywords in there, but that's a good way to see um, what Amazon thinks your product is. So that's Amazon advertising, or if you've got Helium 10, you just uh, do that in Helium 10 Cerebro and, and look at the Amazon recommended rank column. Got it. No, these are really practical uh, advice on how to plan your keyword research and strategy for both Amazon tools and like Helium 10 tools. Uh, now, Bradley, to sum up, I heard you usually close on episode with 60 second tip on your podcast. Do you have anyone, anything for today? Yes, so it's gonna be about that Amazon uh, recommended rank. And again, the way you do that is either through advertising or in Cerebro, it can, it can go either way. But what I do when I launch, going back to the initial part, when I launch a new product, sometime I will launch a kind of like throw, what I call a throwaway ASIN, is I want to make sure that I'm not gonna have relevancy issues when I launch. So I actually create my listing exactly as I would have planned. I have to get a UPC code and everything. And then I put it up there and then I check what is showing up either in Helium 10 or in the Amazon advertising. And then if I see irrelevant keywords there, um, a, a, a good example, I'm going to go over 60 seconds, but oh, well, I'm, it's, it's my own rule, so I, I can break it. Uh, I launched a sock uh, that was uh, so some socks. It was a, like a humor sock. And on one sock on the bottom, it says, if you can read this on the other sock, it said, bring me coffee, right? <laughs> my main keywords where it should be like, like gifts for coffee lovers and and for moms who like coffee and stuff, because that's that's what it is. I could not get any impressions in Amazon advertising for my coffee related keywords. When I started, I'm like, wait a minute, I optimized my listing fine. But then I thought about it, I was like, oh, I'm in the clothing category. The Amazon algorithm is looking at this listing like this is a sock. Like you don't need to be, you know, you don't need, this is not relevant to coffee. And so when I looked at this Amazon recommended rank at the top ones in Helium 10, it said black sock, pink sock, like just like super mm. generic keywords. And so I was like, oh, Amazon hasn't even 
related my listing to coffee. And so now I need to go back to my listing and try and see if I could if I could do things or send some traffic, you know, from off Amazon to Amazon for coffee related keywords, which is what I did. And then I became relevant and then I had no problem with my advertising. But again, the hack is that, hey, you don't wanna be doing all of these tests and figuring out what's going on on your live listing, you're losing period of your honeymoon period. So do that. If you think there's gonna be any issue, just launch an ASIN for a couple of days and see how it goes and figure out what you need to do to be relevant to Amazon. And then now when you launch your regular product, just go ahead and do that in the first hour, you already know everything you have to you know, change. And now you are launching with your best foot forward. Got it. No, that's that's amazing. And I would love to get those pair of socks actually. Sure. But we will link below to the Helium 10 partner directory. Uh, but if anyone wants to listen to your podcast and like find out about it, where and like where and like how should they go about it? Yeah, so a serious sellers podcast. All right, so you can find that on Apple Podcasts or any other uh, platform. And that's also like my Instagram too, Serious Sellers Podcast. You can get like little bite-sized uh, clips of the podcast on there too. And I have a lot of people from Amazon. Uh, I'm, a lot of Amazonians come on the podcast too that, that give insights on a lot of cool things. So make sure to tune in. Awesome. Wonderful. So that's all we have for today. Uh, thank you very much, Bradley, for the time. And also, obviously, with the insight that you provided with us for Prime Day Keyword Relearnings and then for Q4 preparations. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Yes. So we'd love to hear what you thought about today's discussion. You can like, comment, and share below. Let us know what content you would like us to bring to you, what you would like to learn, what you would like to see and hear from Amazon ads. We'll see you in the next episode and in the know and thanks for joining today.